Welcome everyone to my Ecuador presentation, um, my webinar on our three partners in Ecuador. We are going to be um, talking a little bit about Anaconda Amazon Cruises, Hacienda Zuleta and Integrity Galapagos today. Um, this is um, one of several webinars we've been doing recently. Last week Simon did his trip to to Brazil and before that I did my Costa Rica one and all of these webinars that we're doing at the moment are all on our YouTube channel and they are all recorded so once I've done this which will be about a 30 minute presentation and time for questions afterwards um, then we upload them onto our YouTube channel I send you the link and I send you the documents and um, useful information and images associated with each of these partners as well should you want to um, feature them on your website or or use them in, in marketing materials. Now, I went to get Ecuador in um, May, um, just a couple of months ago. Uh, I was lucky enough to get out there um, after two years of uh, traveling hiatus, of course. I was due to be going out in April 2020, but obviously had to cancel that. So I was so excited to be out in Ecuador again. It's one of my favorite South American countries, not that I can really have any favorites. Um, but what I really love about the country is it the accessibility of traveling within Ecuador. It, and I was totally reminded of that when I was there. Um, obviously, you have this incredible Amazon basin that takes up this huge area of the east of Ecuador um, that borders Peru and Colombia. You then got this incredible um, avenue of, of um, volcanoes and, and the Andes, which cover the, the whole central part of Ecuador, um, right from the south to the north. And then you've got these beautiful, humid, kind of low-lying regions with a lot of um, like banana plantations and cacao plantations and coffee plantations. Then you've got the more dry coastal area. Uh, and so as because Ecuador is right on the equator. You don't have a huge vary, um, variation in seasonal um, climates, but you do get regional climates. Um, so the seasons in the Amazon don't change very drastically at all. In the Andes, it's generally fairly similar all year round. You might get kind of uh, more, more um, cloud cover at certain times of year. And the same goes for the Galapagos, more or less the sea temperature changes um, and the air temperature changes, you get the Garua mist coming in in our autumn time. Um, but really one of the one of the really great uh, USPs or, or benefits of visiting Ecuador is that it, for its size, you can travel around it really easily and it's got this great kind of constant climate. Um, and it's just one of the most beautiful countries. I think it's got um, a huge variation in things and a massive um, range and biodiversity. So I'll go ahead, I'll start with um, where we started, which was with Anaconda. Um, we spent one night in Quito at Gangotena, which was absolutely wonderful, fully recommend it. You got that beautiful view over San Francisco uh, Square, um, really beautifully looked after by Metropolitan Touring and um, yeah, a, a great option, I think. Just gonna see how I go on to the next slide. Okay. So Anaconda Amazon Cruises is the only cruise um, operator in Ecuador. They uh, operate with two vessels, the Anaconda and the Manatee. So you may already be familiar with the um, Amazon in Ecuador. Um, there are a selection of different amazing lodges in the Amazon in Ecuador. You've got Napa, you've got Sacha, and as I mentioned, Anaconda is the only cruise um, itinerary in Ecuador. So to get there, please excuse the quite rudimentary Google map, um, you fly from Quito to Coca. Now, as the crow flies, that flight should only take about 10 minutes, but because you are surrounded by these enormous conical volcanoes, snow-capped mountains, it has to kind of do this loop around quite near to Ibarra um, and then back around to Coca, but it still only takes half an hour. So it's an amazing little flight that takes you to Coca. And then this is the Rio Napa, the Napa River. Napo River, uh, which um, actually is the border to the two quite well-known reserves here, so the Yasuni National Park and the Cuyabano National Park. Um, so this area of Ecuador and the Amazon um, area of Ecuador is um, one of the most biodiverse areas in the world. There's around 1,500 species of plants, 600 species of birds, um, almost um, 200 species of mammals, um, in this kind of huge 70 hectare um, site. 
70,000 hectare sites, sorry. Um, and so a lot of these are also endangered. So you've got the, the pink dolphin, for example, you've got a specific type of turtle, um, you've got giant otters. You, there's quite a lot of endangered animals in this area. That's something that Anaconda work closely with, with their conservation programs. Um, and it's also home to communities of six of Ecuador's indigenous nations. So that's Kofan, Quichua, Guarani, Chua, Sequoias, and Sionas. Um, and so they all have their own particular traditions and their own and their own um, you know, different clothing styles. They have their own specializations as well. Um, that's something I'll talk a little bit about as well. The, this area is also home to one of the newest Ramsar sites, which is a wetland of international importance, which means it's got this extra protection um, and then people monitoring it. A lot of research goes into it. Um, and I found out recently that it's one area of the world that wasn't touched by the ice age. It was actually left um, as it, as it has been for, for millennia, uh, which means there's a lot of species here that um, are endemic and, um, and prolific. It is precisely because of these reasons that it is one of the most biodiverse regions in the planet. And so we'll go on to the routes that the Anaconda, um, Amazon, Anaconda Amazon Cruise offers. offers. So you, when you're flying into Coca, you're taking a one and a half to hour to one hour 45 minute motorized canoe to this area here where you pick up either the Anaconda or the Manatee. Um, and then the red uh, route, which is the one I did, is the three night route. You're going all the way down to Pana Cocha and then you're working your way back and making stops on the way back. For the four night itinerary and seven night itinerary, you're going all the way down to the border with Peru and again, making your way back, making stops. So you're going really deep into this region, um, something that, you know, not many people are able to do. It's an um, untouched region for tourists, essentially. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful place to, um, to explore. Um, so, as I mentioned, this is, this was part of my trip. This this presentation is to give you an idea of what 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 I did. So a lot of these photographs are my own. Um, they're also some of my partners, who is a photographer who came with us. And um, yeah, so basically, when you're flying into Coca, you've got this incredible view out across the the hills um, and the forests of Napo River. Um, and when you arrive, you're taken to the Anaconda offices, which is um, a beautiful little. Um, VIP room, which they call their VIP room, where they have tea and coffee and snacks, um, and they talk you through the map, which I'll show you in just a moment. But they also take you on this market tour of Coca, which I really enjoyed, actually. Um, so they talk to the market store ladies and, and they say, you know, we're going to give them an example of the, to these tourists of what you're selling. Um, and so they take you through all the different kind of interesting cuisines and the different kind of medicines that people are selling here. Um, and, you know, when you're coming into the Amazon, it's this hot, humid place and you just want to get immersed in in what how different it is to the Andes or how different it is to the Galapagos or, or Quito, you know, and, and that's exactly what this introduction does. So this is um, the Anaconda offices where everyone um, comes in first thing in the morning after coming off their flight, um, has a kind of a second breakfast and is taken through the itineraries by the guides um, before getting on to our motorised canoe. Um, and traveling down river. The canoe is really, really comfortable, big um, single seats. Um, so yeah, very, very comfortable. They've got all your luggage in the back, all, all weather protected, and they've obviously got these um, uh, plastic sheets that come down if it does rain. So going on to the vessels themselves. So the Manatee is the newer of the two vessels. It was built in 2017. Um, it has 10 standard suites and four deluxe suites on two different um, decks. Um, and then it has the sun deck or observation deck with the jacuzzi and sun lounges. Um, and then the first deck, which is where you come in um, from all of the excursions. And that's where you have your welcome drink and it's where you're putting on your life jacket and your Wellington boots. And they also that's where they have the dining room as well. So the deluxe suites on the Manatee um, are beautifully designed. They're very bright, very um, colorful. They've got these lovely murals on the walls and they all have these balconies as well. Um, and all of the cabins on all the two boats have these wonderful floor to ceiling windows. The deluxe cabins also have these much larger bathrooms with a jacuzzi bathtub and the window that looks out onto the river. Um, and the standard suites are very similar to the deluxe suites. They're slightly smaller, again, with the balconies, which you can see here, some are interconnected. So that's particularly good for families. Um, and others also can have a roll away bed. So again, you can fit three people in a room. And um, 
they're divided equally with twin rooms and double rooms as well. They have these beautiful lounge areas where um, lectures are given in the evenings on the conservation, on the wildlife, on the national parks. Um, and there's eating area at the back as well, um, where they have barbecues in the evenings um, and quite often breakfast and lunch as well. And a small bar too, where, um, you know, any cocktails can be ordered, any beers and, and uh, drinks throughout the day. The dining room on the on the um, entry deck is is very beautifully kind of laid out and very comfortable, all air conditioned as well. Um, and still with your eye constantly going outside to seeing what's across the water and lots of extra little seating areas. So you're incredibly comfortable um, and you know, you've got places to sit and relax and to observe. This is what I the main thing that I found from being on board the Anaconda was the observation. You know, you're, you are constantly surrounded by water, but also the banks of the river. And so you can sit anywhere and just watch the world go by, watch you know the cloud formations and the sunset and the sunrise and the boats going past. It's something I really, really enjoyed. The Anaconda uh, vessel is, is slightly older um, and it is their original boat um, and it is slightly larger. So they have 14 standard suites and four deluxe suites on the, um, on the Anaconda. Um, the deluxe suites are 24 metres squared and the standard suites are 20 metres squared. Um, so the decor on the Anaconda is slightly more kind of upmarket, slightly kind of muted tones, um, slightly different. They all have the deluxe suites, again, have these balconies um, on board, but the standard suites on the Anaconda actually only have um, French balconies. But this does mean that there's more room in the cabin. They are more spacious and um, yeah, they're extremely comfortable. Again, air conditioned with these beautiful floor to ceiling windows. There's lots of lovely touches as well. Um, everybody gets their own rucksack, their own hat, um, a little selection of local teas and some Pakari chocolate. There's lots of really lovely little personal touches that go with these rooms. Again, they have their salon with the floor ceiling windows, um, very comfortable place just to sit and relax. Um, and the same, same kind of dining room set up on the first deck. The food was absolutely brilliant. I was very, you know, really pleasantly surprised by how well it was beautifully it was presented. Um, a lot of care went into it, care and attention. You get three course meals three times a day, so you're not short of a, short of a meal. Um, and it's all delicious food. They take great care and attention in using a lot of um, ingredients from the Amazon. Um, so that's something that they um, put a lot of effort into doing. Um, but the the feeling behind Anaconda Amazon Cruises. So uh, it's, it's family owned. It's a family owned business with Raul and Martha and their son Diego. So this is Raul on the left and Diego, his son, who is um, pointing something out to me in the boat. Um, and Raul has been navigating these waters in the Amazon for over 40 years. He knows it like the back of a hand. He also knows the communities extremely well. Before he set up Anaconda, he made it his, um, he, he kind of, he, he took it upon himself to go and investigate what was out there in the Amazon. And he, he went and visited each of these communities himself and went and stayed with them for a while. And he just really wanted to get under the skin of who they were and what they, um, what their kind of um, ethos was. And he really wanted to be able to provide a, an alternative income for them that wasn't um, the oil companies buying land from them essentially. So he wanted to come in with a, an excellent um, model for community tourism and sustainable tourism. And that's where Anaconda Cruises have come in. So yeah, they mainly work with the Kawicha and Sequoia communities, but there are many others that he is, he's um, established very good relationships with. Um, so, yeah, and then that really comes through in the itineraries and, and particularly the, the longer itineraries where you're able to visit more of the different communities along the way. So apart from the visiting the communities and, and, and learning from, the, from these um, families, um, they offer many different experiences. So as with most other Amazon and jungle lodges um, and Cruises, you, uh, there's a night walk included um, and there are kayaks on board, enough for everybody. Um, there are different canopy towers that they visit. These canopy towers are, are quite often um, owned by local communities. So they um, work with them to make sure that they um, 
you know, provide an income for them and to help with the maintenance of, the, of these canopy towers. And then the other excursions will include going out in the motorized canoe to the different canals, so going right deep into the forest along these different channels and canals. And quite often they'll have um, a base where they'll set up as well, where they'll have um, cabins and a, and a sheltered area to have to have lunch um, and to set off from there on different trails into the forest. Um, and with the guides as well. So make sure you've got a lot of kind of interaction and education about how the different people who live in the jungle work with the forest and, and the different plants they use and, and things like that. Um, a visit to the clay lick is also included. The clay lick is right on Napo River. Um, and that was really interesting. I've never been to a clay lick before, so I was fascinated by this. And that this does tend to change with the seasons a bit, but we still saw an amazing amount of, of parrots. And actually they were being spooked by a hawk that was up on the um up on the trees. And so it was really interesting to see this interaction with the two different species. And we and at that spot we also saw two different um families of monkey as well. Um, I think it was a red back howler monkey, and I can't remember what the other one was right now, but um, I'll look that up, that up in my notes. Um, and this was really interesting because this was one of the only places we did see other tourists. And uh, so that's another thing that I really enjoyed about being on the boat is that you're you're not coming across other other groups of tourists at all. Um, but, you know, of course, this is one of the only clay licks in, clay licks in the area. Um, and then, of course, yes, so the fascinating eth ethnic groups that you find in this area. Um, and guests are really given the opportunities to, to learn about the different ways of life that they that they follow, particularly the Sequoia and the Kofan. Um, so yeah, they usually will meet with the Kuichas on the four, five and eight day cruises and the Sequoias on the five and eight day cruises and the Kofanas only on the five and eight day um, cruises as well. And so this will include being taught about their hunting methods, about their medicinal methods. You're um, given a chance to try the, the local uh, cuisine, you're given a chance to, to try out how to make the local foods. Um, and then, of course, you're coming to the Amazon to see wildlife as well. I, I'm sure, as you know, as being experts in um, uh, Latin America, that the Amazon is known for being one of those places that is so dense that wildlife is quite often um, not, you know, that easy to spot. But actually, it was absolutely fantastic when I went. I thought it was brilliant. We saw so many different species of monkeys, lots of amphibians. Um, Anaconda work very closely with conservation programs with the pink dolphin, the turtles and the giant otters. So they make sure that they um, get an opportunity to see to see these animals as well, where the conservation projects are, are being held. Um, the guides were absolutely fantastic. They, we had these two guides, Kevin and Abel, then the, from the local communities. They were incredibly knowledgeable. Um, their English was fantastic. And they were also, on top of that, they were passionate and they were also very funny. You know, they had this very good personal experience with the guests, which um, I was very sad to say goodbye to them at the end of our trip. I have to say, like three nights for me just definitely wasn't long enough. I would absolutely recommend the four night or seven night itineraries, which go on specific days. And then if you're going on these longer trips, they do offer extra onboard experiences. So um, for example, a cooking experience, they also have a chocolate experience as well. And then they, you know, handicraft experience as well. So you'll have one of the guys teaching you how to make things out of the palms. And then one thing that is um, quite new is that they're now offering these glamping options on the four, uh, on the five night and seven night itineraries. Um, so this means they um, take people on onto the land and on the anaconda, you, you stay in these tents um, and that's where you're given your meals as well. And, you know, it's a different experience. So this is extra. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, for somebody who wants that added extra kind of experience. So on the Anaconda, you've got, um, they do have it as the slightly more upmarket boat. So you do have a concierge on board the Anaconda. If guests want to do something slightly different to the rest of the group. They've got a la carte menu and they're looking at including wine with their meals. Um, otherwise, alcohol is not included. Um, and they've got glamping rather than staying in kind of more rustic cabins um, with a, gl a glamping option on the manatee. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning, I think one of the amazing things about choosing a cruise over a lodge is that you are always on the go and you're always thinking something different. There's a lot of variety, a lot of diversity. You're going deep into the Amazon um, and you've got this really incredible kind of family and wealth of knowledge 
um, as, as, a, as part of the business behind, um, behind it as well. Um, now I should go on quickly because I know I'm probably already running out of uh, time. Um, Hacienda Zaleta. So Zaleta has been one of Senderos' partners for many, many years. Simon and Gareth have been working with uh, Fernando for uh, as long as I can remember. Um, and it is one of the most spectacular haciendas, Andean haciendas I've ever been to. So it's a two hour drive from Quito airport, uh, two and a half to a bit more from central Quito, depending on traffic. And it's quite close to Otavalo as well. So it's here in the northern Andes, just north of Quito. Um, it's a 2000 hectare property in this incredible valley surrounded by these um, beautiful forested Andean mountains. Um, and it belonged to the family of Gallo Plaza Lasso, which was a, who was a former president in Ecuador over 100 years ago. Um, the owner, well, one of the owners, uh, manager, uh, contact, uh, all round uh, entrepreneur is Fernando Polanco. If anyone's ever met him before, you'll know that he's a big, strong, wonderful, warm character who just has these incredible visions and these wonderful ideas about community tourism, um, which really came across during my stay. Um, and he lives at the Hacienda. So it is a traditional 16th century hacienda. The original courtyard is from the 16th century. It was originally um, built um, with the Catholic Church, and then they slowly built more buildings and it became a farm. Um, and it is still a working farm and it's at 2,800 metres above sea level. So something to bear in mind there. The interior is really quite varied. So you get these wonderfully big um, kind of grand um, rooms with big oil paintings of the of the ex president and but lots of really interesting black and white pictures of the whole family as well. Um, these wonderful big fireplaces and big sofa areas as well. And there is um, like this, you know, big windows and, and old wooden shutters. It's just it, it oozes history, and the family is still there, so it's 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 living history as well, which is what is fascinating. And there's constantly cheese on tap, really, <laughs> which is obviously a massive highlight. So they make their own cheese at Hacienda Zileta. They're very proud of it. Um, they've learned a lot from the different cheesemakers around Europe as well as around South America. Um, and they have it on um, for, for guests to try with, with cold meats as well as small empanadas. And um, there's an open bar in these um, large sitting rooms as well. It's like an, um, not an open bar, sorry, it's an honesty bar. Um, which is a really lovely touch. Um, so the rooms, there are 21 rooms in three different categories set around these different courtyards. Um, it's quite a maze, the whole property itself. And um, all the rooms are completely different in design and colour. I would say completely different. They're all in the same style, but they're different in style and colour. They all have a wood burning stove. Um, they all have the same kind of furnishings, but they're all named by a different person in the family. So they all do have a certain different aspect to them. So there's three standard rooms, um, which are nice and cozy, but still really roomy, um, with all views out to courtyard or garden. There's 11 deluxe rooms, which are slightly bigger, um, views out to the inner courtyards. This one's called Luce. Um, and then there's seven junior suites, which obviously have these um, larger kind of side areas and, and seating areas. And quite often with very large bathrooms and big bathtubs um, for people to, to enjoy. Um, now the dining area has changed um, in the last couple of years. They have opened up this this whole side wing of one of the one of the buildings um, and made the old dining room into two uh, two new rooms, um, which are still the old traditional style. And um, I just thought it was really beautiful. So the style they have for dining is that generally people will sit around one that one long table. And they will share the dishes that they put out in the middle of the table, and people can choose which of those dishes they want to have. Um, and it's a really lovely way to experience the food that they have on site and, and they grow on site and that they cultivate. So they have their own fresh milk and cream, obviously handmade cheeses. Um, the river has, a, has the trout that they bring in as well. Um, they, they have a lot of um, sheep in the, in the farm too and lots of fresh organic fruit and vegetables. So as you can see here, it's really hearty, lovely, delicious um, delicious food uh i was i was we were fed incredibly well here and and of course with every meal you you have the the accompaniment of the cheese as well 
Um, so yeah, it has 2,000 hectares of pasture land, forest and protected areas and native primary forest. Uh, as I said, it's still a working farm. I was lucky enough to actually see a calf being born when I was there before breakfast, which is absolutely extraordinary. I mean, as someone who's not grown up on a farm, it was extraordinary for everybody else who was there. They're like, yeah, this is common. This is fine. <laughs> it happens all the time. So when you're here at Zilletta, what are you doing? You're here for two or three nights. Um, this map here shows you the, the range of trails you can take. So all these different coloured lines you have here are different trails you can take either on foot, on horseback um, or on mountain bike. So Fernanda is actually investing in some um, uh, powered mountain bikes that he's bringing in quite soon, uh, which is really exciting. And um, I think they'll be really, really useful for people because it's quite it's quite hilly in some places. But the Hacienda itself is here in the middle and uh, near the community of Zuletas. This is the big community letter, which is very linked historically to the Hacienda. Um, and from there, you can go out to, on any of these trails. The most popular one to do and what's included in your stay is a visit to the Condor Centre here, which is at the end of this valley. Um, and it's well worth a visit. There's an interpretation centre there that you're taken through with the local biolo with resident biologist Jan. And um, and he tells you all about the, the conservation project and, and um, how the condor is being protected in the area. I was astonished at how many um, condors, how, how endangered condors actually were. I thought they were fairly ubiquitous over the Andes. You know, you get them in the Calca Canyon and Patagonia, but actually it's very difficult to get them to try and breed and increase their numbers. Um, and then you have um, waterfalls up here in the northern part of the of the property, and um, they're very beautiful as well. And you can take horse riding um, trails up to there. Um, and then you have these incredible archaeological um, kind of pyramids in the valley that you walk past on your way to the different places. So there's a, a huge variety of, of things you can do. So when you arrive at Zuleta, you've got this concierge or host who takes you through the different activities. And then if you want to do kind of extra horse riding or biking, then he books that for you as well. Um, so what's included are the is the cheese factory, any of the trails are self-guided. Um, if you're staying three nights, you get one um, afternoon horse riding and um, and then anything else is, is extra and you can book it whilst you're there. And um, this is Jan, who is the resident biologist, who um, talks you through the, the conservation um, project with the condors, which is here. They also have a conservation project with so the spectacle bear, which are very easily spotted in this area as well. And these are the mountain bikes, not the parasitic mountain bikes, but these are the bikes that they have. They have enough for all the guests there as well. And then the horse riding is um, really, really good. Um, on my trip, I had um, a woman who um, loves horse riding and she went out twice and she said it was excellent horse riding. Um, so you can go out further into the mountains and they do a huge range of different excursions. So anything from two hours to full day to overnight, um, but that could be something that could be requested separately. This is the visit to the cheese factory. They also have a place where you can buy their own produce. So their jams and marmalades, and of course, all their cheeses as well. And then some extra excursions too, that you can have embroidery workshops. So what this area is really known for is their incredibly intricate and beautifully designed embroidery. There's also cooking workshops you can do. These are the archeological sites in the valley. Um, Fernando told us just last week that he's got a residency with um, uh, some people from the University of Texas who are collaborating with the University in Ecuador. Um, to excavate some more archaeological sites in the area. So he's really excited about that and something we can update you with. So he has, yeah, Zuleta is, is a wonderful place to visit he, at any point in my itinerary, really, any kind of stop off near Quito for people of all ages and families. And it's a wonderful place just to come and explore and have a picnic out in the mountains um, and, uh, and feel about the kind of tradition of Ecuador and what it has to offer. Um, and also the, the incredible history it has to offer as well. It's, it's a really beautiful hacienda with huge grounds that you can walk around and, and beautiful plants and flowers and a big children's play area as well. So I could go on all day about about the letter. So I'll um, quickly go on to um, integrity, the last um, spot of our um, of our, our trip. 
So I've been to the Galapagos once before, about eight years ago, and I did a land-based itinerary as well as three nights on a 16-passenger yacht, kind of a mid-range 16-passenger uh, yacht, which was a catamaran. Um, so I was really excited to be going on the in Integrity because they only run seven night cruises. So the Integrity boat itself is um, one that's been around in the Galapagos for quite a few years, probably about 20, 25 years. It's a well-established boat. Um, it just hasn't really come been in the kind of European UK market as much. It's been in the US market much more. Um, it's owned by a family called the Sievers, who are half Ecuadorian, half um, German. And they live on the Galapagos Islands and they have uh, a farm on the Santa Cruz Island. Uh, they've only ever owned the boat and they look after it themselves. So they're two sons who are um, engineers and designers. They do all the kind of the maintenance and the engineering for the boat every time it goes into dry dock. Um, they're very kind of discerning about how it looks and how it's run. And Bill Roberson from Inca, they actually run the boat. So they're the GSA who, who do all the bookings of the guys and the crew and the itineraries. And these guys have known each other since the 70s. They met on the Galapagos Islands as um, naturalist guides. In fact, Rolf was actually one of the first um, directors of the Galapagos uh, Darwin Research Centre. So they, these guys know the Galapagos at the back of their hands. They and they very carefully designed these two seven night itineraries to make sure the guests got the best ultimate wildlife experience they could, with obviously within the restrictions of the national park. So they do east and west. They're always alternating, which means that you can do a fourteen night itinerary uh, with both east and west. This is Bill in the middle with his daughters, Marika and Kim. Marika's on the left there, um, and she and Bill work um, with all the reservations that come through for the integrity. So the boat itself, um, I think, is a beautiful boat. It's, um, it's very understated, but it's very slick. It looks lovely on the water, I think, um, especially when it's surrounded by these kind of range of other boats in a bay. And I just thought it looked, you know, very kind of... Um, yeah, very understated, but, you know, a really beautiful looking boat. And inside the, the interior is quite a classic yacht nautical feel to it. You know, it's got this polished wood, um, an antique wood and some mahogany as well, and these muted tones. So while this boat classes, you know, classes itself in the luxury market, it's also got this very relaxed feel to it. So the boat was full when we were on it and it never felt like it was at all kind of um, stuffy or anything like we didn't have to feel like we had to dress up for dinner. It was a really convivial atmosphere on board. Um, obviously, you can see from the dining area that there's these different tables. And so that meant that everybody was dining with somebody different every night. We were a huge range of people. So, um, so a family with the two people in their 20s and then there were ladies in their 70s. Uh, which was really great. So a mixture of families and couples and friends. Um, so they've got this small bar here, um, which is at the end of the large salon, like really comfortable salon. And they've got a little library here as well and a coffee station with snacks. Um, the food was excellent. So um, again, three course meals, three times a day, set menus. And they do include two glasses of wine with their evening meals. Um, one thing to bear in mind in their pre-departure info is that they do um, suggest that if people want to, they can bring their own wine on board with no corkage fee, um, which we did. But we did actually didn't end up drinking all of it because it was so nice to be able to have those two glasses of wine with, with our meal and not feel like you wanted, needed to kind of drink any more and it was just enough. Um, and also when you're getting up nice and early in the morning and doing lots of activities, you don't feel like you need to kind of stay up and have any more. Um, so their sun deck has recently been renovated since their last dry dock. And this is where you also have these wonderful big barbecues. A lot of food in, goes into these, these barbecues, lots of fresh salads as well as kind of fresh fish and, and meats as well. Um, this is what it used to look like with tables and chairs here and a central bar area here. They got this, but they still have this same jacuzzi area at the front, but now it has these big sofas underneath the partially shade area here and, and, and the um, sofas at the back and the seats here and the same with the jacuzzi area at the front. Um, so this is what it looks like when it's full. This was the only time that we were all up there apart from when we were spotting flamingos in the crater. 
um, and it didn't feel at all crowded. It was it was lovely and and spacious, um, really lovely area. Constant breeze coming through as well. And this is our guide giving us a snorkeling briefing. There's also this spot called Rolf's Roost at the bow of the boat, so another play, great place just to sit and relax and to watch the world go by, particularly with a cocktail. So I'll quickly take you through the decks um, or the deck plan rather. So for the suites, they are on the entry level deck. They're all in the same deck and you have nine suites, six of which are identical and can be converted to twin to double. Any of them can be converted. You then have one single cabin and one queen cabin, which can't be converted, and then one owner's suite. So the owner's suite spans the width of the boat. It's at the bow of the boat. It's supposedly one of the largest cabins in the Galapagos Islands. Um, I did take a little look around when I was on the boat and I just thought it was huge, like capacious, really. Um, the couple on board who had it are actually doing a double itinerary. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they were astounded at, at the space that they had. You can actually pull out a bed from this, um, from this seat here. Um, so if you have a family, then they can they can fit in uh, all into this cabin and a large bathroom as well, which is, you know, not often found on these on these boats. The stateroom cabins themselves were incredibly spacious as well. They were lots of room, lots of storage space here. Um, this actually has a, an area to hang things up and lots of um, shelves. They've got small fridges in the rooms um, and these screens with DVD players as well, and all air conditioned. And then with lovely picture windows as well, which lets in a lot of natural light. Uh, so when you're um, kind of in the boat and, and you've got no one walking past as well because they go straight out, which that allows for the extra space in the room. The space under the bed as well to store the luggage, which I always thought was a real USP for, for cabins because there's very rarely that much space. Um, and those windows are also blacked out on the outside. So when you're moored beside another boat, you've got nobody looking in when you're doing all your changing in and out of your wetsuits. So this is what it's like as a twin cabin, obviously very similar, the same size, um, all the, the same amenities for the bathrooms. And the queen cabin is slightly different shape, which is why it can't be converted into a, a twin. And the single, single cabin. So, um, yeah, definitely enough space for um, for just one person. The crew on board are amazing. Nothing was too much for them. Um, very smiley, very, very uh, friendly. Um, it was interesting because there was one older lady on the boat who didn't come snorkeling quite as often as everybody else. And she stayed on board whilst we were doing that. And she told me unprompted that they were just going about the logistical business whilst we were out on our excursions without any bother. You know, there was no loud music. There was no shouting across the decks. Um, yeah, she said it was um, a really, you know, kind of a refreshing kind of change than what she might have expected, which I was really pleased about. So going on to the guiding. So this is what I think really makes the integrity stand out. So you see what the boat looks like. It's very classic boat. It's very well established. It's not, you know, that very modern kind of style that, that other boats have. Um, they have they work with very, very particular guides on the on the integrity. So this is one of them, uh, Greg. He's a biologist by um, trade and he's married to another biologist and her parents actually are some of the most well-known um, Darwin Finch biologists in the world. They've, they've um, researched the Darwin Finches their whole lives in the Galapagos Islands. He's been working since the 90s as a guide, um, an incredible guy with a wealth of knowledge and he's done thousands of trips and just um, the most in, amazing immersive educational experience, I'd say. He also loved uh, the snorkeling. He came snorkeling with us almost all the time and took um, a footage under, under the sea of different species and then showed us later in the evening um, his footage as well. Very personable, really lovely guy, lots of stories and um, very funny. He also let us go off and kind of take pictures and, you know, obviously not off the path, but he was he never felt corralled. He never felt kind of pushed along anywhere. He encouraged us to swim back to the boat from the islands. There were just all of these things that I thought he had a real a knowledge of, of, of what a guest might want and the kind of level of knowledge that um, they, he wanted to impart to people as well. Um, and then when people didn't want to go snorkeling or kayaking, he would make sure he took them out into the zodiacs as well to see what they wanted to see. This couple here, Bill and Leanne, actually they were um, the ones doing the double itinerary. They had been to the Galapagos 
30 years previously, I think it was, and had Greg as their guide then, which was absolutely extraordinary. So it was amazing to see them kind of reconnect and, and listen to their stories. And then you've got Richard Palatti, who is a geologist. So all of the people they work with, they work with three main guides, have their own speciality. Um, they all started working in the Galapagos in the 90s, which means that they were able to um, get their licenses before you had to be from the Galapagos to be a guide here. Uh, and again, he's got a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of experience and stories, very personal guy, loads of amazing reviews. And then Patricia, who has her own cacao farm on the Galapagos Islands. She's a wildlife photographer. She speaks French and German as well as Spanish English. So for those of you from Germany, that's something to bear in mind. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so you can request any of the because they usually have their schedules far in advance. So you can usually request when when they're going to be guiding on those trips. Um, they do encourage families on board. So, um, yeah, they the feeling on board is one of a very relaxed atmosphere. And they, I could see that they had a lot of activities for kids as well. So books and puzzles and things. They do have a particular family departure. Um, and then, yeah, this is why we go to the Galapagos for these incredible scenes of these wonderful, wonderful experiences. So the snorkeling was outstanding. They were out once or twice or, you know, with swimming back to the boat three times a day. Snorkeling equipment is all included, including the wetsuits. You get fitted with them in Puerto Ayora before you get on board. Um, there's kayaks enough for everybody as well. We were out kayaking at least once a day, uh, which I loved, mostly always with a tailwind as well that pushed you down the bay. Um, and then you're, you're here surrounded by kind of huge colonies of sea lion, um, seeing all species of the babies. Because of these seven night itineraries, you get this wonderful variety of um, animals and sea life as well. This is a cave full of uh, white tipped sharks that we saw that Greg managed to get us to peek into, which was absolutely extraordinary. Um, we saw a huge amount of albatross, which I was really pleased with because um, I hadn't seen them on the previous journey I'd, I'd been on. And then, of course, you're there not only for the wildlife, but for the incredible geology as well, and these huge lava fields and the volcanoes and the history behind that. So, yeah, the integrity. Why, why choose the integrity? Well, I think for a number of different reasons. You've got these incredible seven night itineraries that are very carefully chosen. The guiding is world class. I mean, I, I, it feels like a fully immersive experience when you're on this on this trip. Um, the, the businesses that run the boat and own the boat are both family owned and have been for many, many years. It's a very, very comfortable vessel. Um, and they've got free laundry service. They've got free Wi-Fi and they've got VIP lounge exits at Beltra Airport, which I thought was actually a really nice touch. I didn't think it would be something that I would be too fussed about, but actually it's uh, it really did help kind of get things sorted when you're at the airport on arrival and also on departure. And also they offer these exclusive use and charter, as many boats do, but exclusive use options, which means which are slightly better conditions than or not better, but kind of favorable conditions than the charter in that um, it's less expensive and it's um, everyone is billed separately. Um, so you can have a group of friends that come on board. Uh, and so the price is per, per cabin and then you pay a certain amount for the for the extra cabins. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. You can and I can send you more information about that. Um, afterwards. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. I'm sorry I have gone over quite a bit, but um, fitting three of our incredible partners into half an hour is, is quite a tricky feat. Um, this is just a list of the rest of our partners. Uh, we will be running more um, uh, webinars as we go on. As I said, I did one on Costa Rica. Simon did one on Brazil. So they're all on our YouTube channel. Feel free to have a look. Um, but yeah, does anybody have any questions? Feel free to pop them in the chat or you can unmute yourself and um, ask me any questions at all. Um, I'd be happy to answer anything having just gone back. Anyone? <laughs> can I have just one question, please? <laughs> No? You were just too informative. Oh. <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> that was really interesting, though. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Well, I'll follow up with um, an email to everybody afterwards. And um, I will, and then you can always email me back with anything that you, you want to, to let me know. So thanks very much, guys. And I'll, and I'll be in touch again. Thanks so much. Bye. Cheers. Bye.